I, you know, I have notes, all this stuff. I sweat a little bit when I talk, that sort of thing. But that's okay, right? We're all coaches here. We sweat. Um, but I want to send out a message a little bit uh, and talk about my family because that's, to me, that's the outside of my, my faith is, is the number one priority. Uh, and there's no question about that. Uh, but I'd like to thank Frank Kelly uh, and certainly Ryan for inviting me here today to be a part of this uh, wonderful event. Uh, the FCA vision to see the world impacted for Jesus Christ through the influence of athletes and coaches is, uh, is terrifically awesome. Uh, I love it. I went to UNC and, and, and played for, for Coach Mead and Coach Scroggs and Coach Klarman uh, and frequented the Newman Center and continued to explore my faith. Uh, but like most kids, I was still figuring things out. Started coaching at UNC and, and then up at Brown where my life started to change. I met an awesome young lady, Julie, my wife, who we met at uh, Brown University and soon I was fortunate enough to get a, a job out at the Ohio State University and be a part of their program in 1998. Julie and I were soon engaged in 99 and in 13 months later, we had our first child, Michael Robert Bresci, who was named after both of his grandfathers. Mike would challenge us every day, every day, from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. He was, not only were we first time parents, but he was a colicky child. I mean, if, you, if anybody ever have a colicky child, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, just up and screaming and hollering the whole time. I would spend most of my time trying to get him to sleep uh, at night, and part of my journey, because Julie and I would shift, you know, your turn, my turn, your turn. I would grab Mike and, and put him in the uh, minivan, and I'd drive up on High Street. And High Street's the main drag at, at Ohio State. And, you know, at 1.30 in the morning, I'm trying to get him to sleep through the vibration of the car and that sort of thing. And it's humming and all that sort of thing. And he's sleeping, he's waking up. I see Gilardi on the side of the, on the, side of the road at 1.30. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Just don't get in trouble, would you? <laughs> then they text each other. Actually, there wasn't texting back then, was there? So they call each other. Hey, you know, I, I think um, one guy had, there was only one guy who had a phone back then. <laughs> Cell phone. Mike entered preschool at Overbrook by December. And, or in December, he was excited for us to see the first preschool Christmas party, which was a pretty cool thing. It was 20 minute long, you know, it's a preschool. 20 minutes long and, and about five Christmas songs that they'd all sing together, which was a pretty proud moment as parents. They'd line up five classes in the back. The church was packed. I mean, it was packed. About this big aisle down the middle. They had five classes, so all the classes would walk right up the aisle, right up the middle, and Mike was three, so he was in the youngest class and the last class to be up front. So the five classes would roll up to the front and they'd line up across the top. Well, of course, as parents, your proud parents, you're gonna dial them up in the, you know, in the pretty cool outfit. So he has the wide rails on, the green wide rails, and he's got the bright red Christmas sweater. Okay, turtleneck, I'm like, Julie, got a little tougher look here. <laughs> he's got the preppy little look there. And, Wide rails, okay. <laughs> so he gets up there, and lo and behold, he's right in the middle, like right in the middle in the front row. So he's got this huge smile on. He's just, you know, as bright because he's got this really bright red, uh, Buckeye red sweater on, which is pretty cool. So he's standing right up in the middle, and the songs start. They sing the first one, and everything's great. And we're like high fiving each other. We're the loudest parents in the group. And then, uh, then sure enough, the second song starts, and Mike finds his nose. So he starts to pick his nose right in the front, and Julie and I are like, oh God, oh God. So we're like looking down there, we're like, oh. We're trying anything we can to shake it. And he can't, you know, he can't get away, we clap, they all turn around, they look at each other and clap, and then he goes right back to it, it's all great. And song four and song five. So he ripped through, I don't know what he was looking for up there, but he found something, which was pretty cool. So 
when you ask me how does this relate to my faith and relationship with God, tragically, March 1st, 2004, many of you know, uh, Mike's life ended uh, as he was struck by a car at preschool, at that preschool uh, in Columbus, Ohio. And that day he left us physically, but he's certainly in great hands with God. Shortly after his life, our relationship with God changed tremendously. It was a struggle, there's no question about it. Uh, but we fought through it in many, many ways and, and can, became stronger, not only together as a family and my relationship with my wife, but also with our relationship and faith in God. But another little story I'll tell you about how the relationship with Christ and, and God you know, became strong in myself and, and continues to be is it was a struggle in March and, and certainly in early April and it was the national championship basketball game. I remember Julie being in bed and I was struggling down watching the game, just trying to distract myself a little bit. And I went up to bed and I was battling, it was about 11.30, 12 o'clock and I had this, uh, uh, next to my bed, I had a window uh, that I'd always look out uh, before I went to bed. For some reason, I'd just always look out. Uh, and, to, and to preface this story, a little bit. In Mike's preschool, when he'd walk into his room, into his classroom, they'd have hooks lined up along the wall. And they'd have to go over to this kind of makeshift tree. Okay? So they'd go over and they all have a symbol. So whether it was the moon, the sun, that sort of thing. Mike's symbol was a star. So he would go over and grab the star, toss it in the bag or the basket that would signify that he's here. And over his hook, where he put his jacket, his symbol was the star. So the, all the kids would know where to put their things. So he put his jacket on there and went over and took his star off and, and tossed it in there. So I go up to bed and I, I look out the window and, and really struggling, really struggling. And I said, you know, I closed my eyes and I said, you know, God, I said, I'm, I'm really having a, a really tough time right now. Getting through today and, and, and battling a little bit with, with everything. And I just need to know that things are, are gonna be okay. Close my eyes, open them up, and a star drops across the house, across the street. And to me, that was God saying, you know what, Joe, everything's okay. And it was Mike saying, Dad, everything's gonna be okay. Which is a pretty, pretty cool story. And I've never seen one before, and I've never seen one since. But I know right now that things are in good shape with Mike being with God. Pretty cool story. The entire community came together for us. And one thing I always like to do, an opportunity to talk about my family and my faith and, and uh, the relationship, is how this lacrosse community came together. Absolutely unbelievable. Absolutely incredible how these lacrosse coaches, high school, youth coaches, college coaches, everybody came together to support us. My coach, Willie Scroggs, put together a, a charter flight to, to grab coaches up the East Coast, and, and these guys were here for, for myself and my family. Uh, and, and that's the amazing thing about this family we call lacrosse. They came together and supported Julie and I in such a great way. <laughs> And that, that's one thing we'll never forget. And we will always want to give that opportunity to give back and to mention it and to thank all of you for your support because it was unbelievable and we would not have survived. Wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you all. And the support of, of the Ohio State University Athletic Department and all the people and friends that, that came together. It's now, we put together a scholarship at Mike's name. It's the largest memorial athletic scholarship at the Ohio State University. This, to this day, which is a great thing, and it's the support of the lacrosse community. FCA, thank you very much.